data and livelihood. So for the last session, we're going to talk about permaculture and livelihood. So this was a session that was requested by, I don't remember who, in a previous event, but I think it's a nice topic to talk about. Um, yeah, and in putting those two words together, I guess there's a couple of different directions that we could go in. There's kind of taking a permaculture perspective or permaculture um, way of designing our livelihood. And then there's talking about livelihoods directly connected to uh, permaculture. So what are the different ways you can make a living connected to permaculture? But maybe an interesting thing to begin with is to think about like livelihood as a term. Uh, what does that mean to us? Like what is livelihood as opposed to another way of describing kind of the things we would do in our life? So does anyone want to begin with kind of talking about livelihood, what it means to them? What do they think of when they hear that word? I, for me, lively, mm -hmm. okay. livelihood is, um, well, it's, it, it's what you do um, for your life that's something that's meaningful, um, but that works for others. Um, I think it's more than just work. I think it is life um, and it takes you in the direction of doing something that's meaningful because we all have to do something, but it's the right thing to do. And it's in which form we actually do that. Yeah. yeah so no. typically most people see livelihood more as, and I don't particularly believe in this, but as the kind of work that you do to get paid to then uh, be able to meet your needs from that payment. Um, that's, that's a very typical, that's, that's the kind of modern paradigm that we live in. And, um, but I totally agree with Wendelin. It's much, it can be much more than that. It should be a lot more than that. Uh, so it's uh, about how, how do we meet our needs? And in particular, needs that we may not be able to get just on our own by ourselves, i.e. I can grow my own food, I can pickle, I can do this, I can do that. But how do I get, um, but maybe I don't have any skills with medicines. So how do I afford, how do I create exchanges so that I can meet my medicinal needs, for example. And so it's, it's about how to meet the needs that you can't necessarily get for yourself. You know, so it's, it's about this external help. Yeah. Yeah, and I totally agree with what Wendelin said. It's about, you know, how can we do this in a way that gives us purpose, that makes it really, really joyful. I remember being on a train once when uh, the lady next to me, I was thinking I was going from Paris to Barcelona. She said, are you going to Barcelona for work or pleasure? <laughs> As if the two uh, cannot, you know, your work cannot be pleasure. And I looked at her and said, what a crazy question. Like, my work is pleasure. So... What, what is it you're doing that means that your work can't be pleasure, that it's either work or pleasure? So anyway, so yeah, um, how do we make meeting those needs really joyful and pleasurable and really beneficial to all? Yeah, there's, Ruth, yeah. there's something about livelihood that it just suggests there's a dependency there, because you know, you say, oh, it's their livelihood. So like you mustn't take it away from them. Do you know what I mean? It's like they depend on whatever it is to to exist, I suppose. I know it's tied in with what you were saying, but yeah. It's just another dimension. Mm-hmm, yeah. And yeah, I think it's interesting when you look at needs, like sometimes when we say, you know, like what are our human needs? We're kind of looking at like basic physical things but at the same time you know you can have people who have like access to food shelter things like that but at the same time if you don't have like access or like a human connection love 
care, all of those things, excitement, you know, you feel like there's something, a really big hole in, in life. And those are actual needs as well to like have that joy and connection. Um, and I think, yeah, they're also important things to factor into our design. I think, um, anyone else? yeah, could mm -hmm. I just say something there? Um, uh, you know, the, the, the reason why I do permaculture is because I'm a retired teacher. You know, I, I don't need to work. I get, I get a pension. Um, and that's why I'm here in Bulgaria doing what I do. And I'm, we're self-sufficient in vegetables. And, um, you know, we, we, we're part of a community. We share things and so on. Uh, but you know, I have no need to work. Luckily, I've done my 40 years in the classroom and, uh, and now I don't have to. What I'm interested in is that, that you know, there, there are quite a lot of people here that I haven't really heard them speak. And it would be really nice if they could all speak and say, what do they do? Because in order to live a permaculture lifestyle, you have to do something else. Unless you're a commercial outfit and you sell your vegetables and do box veg schemes or something like that, you have to have another job unless you're retired like, like I am. What, what do you do and does it give you pleasure to do that? Uh, you know, does, does, how do you fund your permaculture lifestyle? And that's my question to the other people in the group, really. Yeah, for sure. That's an interesting question and we can get to that. Yeah, sooner or later. Um, but yeah, does anyone else want to add anything on the kind of theme of livelihood? And yeah, if people like, we can also go to this idea of talking about how we've designed our livelihood. Would you like to begin then, Steve? Sorry, say that again. Would you like to begin? Telling us what? Uh, well, you've invited people to talk about their livelihood, but would you like to begin with how you've, you've done it? Yeah, I'm a retired teacher. I get a pension. <laughs> That's how mm -hmm. I fund my permaculture livelihood. What I'm interested in is how do other people do it? What, what do they do that supports, uh, you know, that allows them to do this? You know, I ran a permaculture project in Africa for many years, hence the African surname. And I had to teach in order to fund that. You know, it was I, I had to teach in a in an African school in order to get some local currency because I can grow all, all your own vegetables, but I can't make my own clothes. You know, mm -hmm. and, and and so I had to earn some money to 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 get lu luxury items. You know, I, I just wonder how other people do it. That that's my question to the rest of the group. Okay, so I saw Rakesh, you had your hand up, and then Wendelin. So. I do make my livelihood from permaculture and related things uh, and the way that I work is I kind of work out, you know, first of all, I've massively, massively, massively reduced my financial outgoings and that the only way that I could do that uh, was to pay off my house by uh, working as an IT consultant. So once I paid off the, the biggest debt you know, uh, the mortgage, uh, then I was, was free. So that, that's actually the real crux is what are your outgoings and what are the things that you can manage? And if you're paying rent, if you are paying a mortgage, then it becomes much, much, much more difficult to make a livelihood doing something like this. But once that has been dealt with, so if, if there's some way creatively, i.e. joining some kind of a community that you can address that huge amount outgoing then the rest becomes very very easy and i can massively reduce it you know so if i'm growing my own food if i'm uh, foraging if i'm then working on lots of different community gardens that then give me food as well i'm my food bill is is negligible um you know and then um and so but you know so but i've got a few technology needs you know i've got maybe it's some electricity how can i generate electricity but can i use really energy efficient systems so i can think of many 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 ways in which i can reduce my needs uh, which means that then when i uh, 
but there's certain many things you write as you rightfully say you then need some money for you know in terms of clothing i buy secondhand clothing mostly so or i get given stuff uh because of the places where i work blah 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 there's there's always stuff left over and all right who wants this all right fits yeah that's good all right i'll take that so um uh so then you need to think about right how much do i actually now need to pay this insurance to pay Da, 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 you know the, the the heating bill the light the the, the, the electricity and gas and it. and so that's what you then design your teaching around how do i make sure that uh, over the 12 months i've balanced out you know one course which may you know over 10 days may only bring in um 100 200 euro because i'm teaching in bosnia and you know what i'm not going to charge them much more but then next I do a course in um, in Switzerland, which then brings in 4,000 for two weeks work. And so over the year, it balances out. And so that's my strategy, is I know how much I need to achieve each month. And then I look at other passive incomes. Are there other ways in which I could? So I can DJ, I can, um, I used to sell records. I used to travel around Europe selling vinyls to DJs and doing reggae gigs. Um, I can teach, you know, I can teach many things. I can, I can make stuff. I can, you know, I'm a qualified homeopath, so I can give people remedies and they just give me donations because I can make them really cheap. It's, you're looking at continuously, how do I diversify my income so that all my eggs are not in one non-vegan basket? If you, I'm not sure what the vegan <laughs> equivalent of the eggs in one basket is. Um, or your chestnuts aren't in one basket. But if you drop a chestnut, it's not really catastrophic, is it? Uh, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that that that's how I make sure that I can earn my livelihood is by being clever in terms of uh, thinking um, over a full year. How do I, you know, and and by by so I kind of set a goal. Right, this is how much I need to make for this course. And then I say, right, if everyone contributes roughly this amount, then I should make that. But you know what? If you can afford more, would it be nice if everyone gives this amount? If you can't afford it and you want to give less, that's cool. And, you know, and somehow it balances out. Somehow it just nice. balances out. So thanks for sharing, Rakesh. We've got about five, ten minutes left. Maybe we'll do a circle and go around and everyone has a chance to share if they'd like to. Um, don't sow your seeds at once. Yeah, that's a nice way of putting it, Christina. Um, so if I go around the way I see on my screen, Christina, would you like to go next, followed by Kate? Yeah. So if there's something you'd like to share. Um, sure. So I'm uh, a pretty complicated context uh, because I've lived and I'm still living in the community in the mountains and uh, while there, all my livelihood was in a way pretty assured because I served also the community and I also developed the permaculture thing on the side. Till the permaculture thing got so big that, uh, you know, I serve less and less the community in the way the community wants me to help. And the thing has uh, been that I, I don't resonate much, I, I mean, with some aspects of the community and I, for a while, I, I just, I wanted to, you know, find a way out <laughs> and I'm uh, kind of making, making the crank bigger and bigger for my way out. So I'm, I'm trying to, you know, earn a livelihood so as to sustain the whole permaculture thing. And I have started lots of things like I have started um, a kind of a seed business, let's say, <laughs> I don't know how to call it anyway. So. Uh, and I hope to have a nursery. Um, I, I did start designing and we have also been invited to do some um, teaching, uh, me and my colleague. Um, so, so this has really, I mean, there's a lot of force go going and uh, a lot, lot of things going out, but, um, and, but, but the thing is that we, we we reach the point where we kind of like have worked a lot and we are tired of at the end of the whole year because of everything we've done 
And at this end of the year, we, you know, lots of things also got new, which got us, you know, engaged or, you know, things kind of like accumulated at the end of the year. And we we found out we uh, like all this designing thing we are doing, it's massively underpriced or, you know, it's like a big leak, you know, a big hemorrhage or something like I, I've spent literally days to, to think and to draw and to, you know, then I have actually envisioned or that initially I, we felt we could ask for. So over the whole thing, to be honest, I, I really question this designing thing, if it's a, <laughs> if it's a viable thing, uh, certainly growing uh, things in the garden and selling plants and seeds and stuff like that and teaching is very rewarding. Um, but um, we needed this uh, designing thing. So it, it's still a question of how we can m make uh, think more fair share <laughs> i don't know it's an ongoing process but for now we haven't reached that point and we also see there's a lot of demand i mean uh, perhaps you know we have gained some momentum and there are lots of people asking for us to do things and we realize we we don't have people to collaborate with we would love to uh, teach others how to do and collaborate together, but it takes a lot of time for an effort for them to learn too, and it's not rewarded very well as well. So we're in a... <laughs> anyway. Thank you, so, Christina. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot to say on the subject, but yeah, maybe because we have a, like a time set, um, and it would be nice to hear from everyone. Yeah um yeah to go continue. over just a little bit into the, of course, the yeah. feedback i also think to do that that we can have a short um check out and have more time to share um but in no case yeah it's good to just be aware of the time so everyone has a chance so yeah kate um over to you and then ruth if you'd like to share yeah i think this is quite timely for me because i was also um i've been a teacher for the last eight years um primary and um, for me there's been a lot of cognitive dissonance um, being in mainstream education um, but I chose to have my notice in in February 2020 so that was really interesting timing with COVID and trying to get part-time work and that's now the holy grail for teachers is everybody wants to work part-time because it's not sustainable to be in it full-time in terms of energy mental health the, the way the system is so um, I've discovered I've got what I think a lot of people here have got, which is what's known as a portfolio career, uh, which is where we do have diversity in what we do. And often it's the things that we love the most that pay the least. So I love doing forest school, but that's £10 an hour. I love working at the theatre, that's £9.50 an hour. Whereas, you know, other things I do, you know, teaching obviously earns a lot more because it's a, a, a skilled profession. I think the other problem um, is housing costs in the UK. Um, and rent costs in the UK. So I was, oh, I've just realised I've got my thing up. <laughs> that probably wasn't helping the volume. Um, I've, um, uh, yeah, I had I had a house, a mortgage, I had a flat, um, and during lockdown discovered uh, just how awful my neighbours were in terms of some of the criminal activity that was going on and police raids and things. Uh, so I'm now living back with my parents at the moment um, and planning a house build, um, <laughs> which is exciting and terrifying in equal measures. Um, so I think it's really difficult because if you want a house, uh, and you, I mean, so many people, my, I mean, I'm in my forties, but so many people my age and younger, if you haven't got a partner are living at home in this country because you can't afford a house. So the, the bonus of that being that we have some financial flexibility because we're living at home. So yeah, there's a, a few thoughts. Um, uh, can I quickly you, invite you, Kate, to bring your uh, design, your design of your building into the next Roots and Permaculture Learning Day? Um, well, several it's of very... us, including Christina, myself, Sophie, many of us can take a look at it and give you whatever feedback and advice. And that's yeah. what the Roots and Permaculture Learning Day is all about. Yeah, it's very early days at the moment. So I, I'm currently overwhelmed by opportunity. <laughs> that's cool. Just, just give us the, the spec and... Yeah, whatever but whatever help you need we're here that's, that's amazing thank you lovely so Ruth followed by Wendelin 
Um, yeah, I don't think I've cracked it yet, the livelihood thing. I'm self-employed. Um, some months I break even and other months I kind of rely on universal credit, basically. But I'm lucky enough to work at a land learner site. But I'm also aware that, you know, we're self-employed. Funding could run out. Um, it's, yeah, it's not like a, a job for, nothing is really anymore, job for life. Um, yeah, I've done, I've done more workshops this year than normally, so that's good, kind of like building up a bit of confidence. Um, yeah, but ideally I think I'd like to work in a kind of small collective. I, I just find it much more fun to work with other people and we all like pool our skills together. Um, yeah, for me that would be a really kind of a right livelihood. Um, yeah. I think that's it really. Oh, I'm, I live really frugally as well, like I cut my own hair, I've got an allotment. Um, the things I do don't really cost that much, but yeah, yeah, I'm pretty happy though. Lovely, thank you Ruth. So, Wendelin followed by Teresa. Um, I, I think, and I, I've said some things in um, just some posts I've um, just put in the chat, that, uh, so we ran a project um, a five acre land learner project in Devon and basically to cut a long story short Covid came along it kind of upset the apple cart and everything so we had to really change so we've gone back to the old paradigm um, but thinking of it holistically what we found was that actually a lot of what we did wasn't accessible to the the mainstream people so we've just taken everything we learned and put that back into the mainstream world so um, and it means, yes, we have to find somewhere to live in a house and rent and stuff like that. So what's been important is to how we take what we know about permaculture, the different aspects of how you can use the diversity and integrate different aspects, um, looking at ethical finance. So our um, social enterprise bank account is Triodos, which is an ethical bank, looking at ethical investment if we, we need to do that. Um, and just following that kind of framework and those sort of principles and being realistic. So lots of things like using the social permaculture. So we're working with community groups at the moment um, in working on implementing forest gardening. And then, and then we started to get involved with councils and suddenly that's taken us into a world we don't want to kind of go back into, but actually realise how useful that is. And then from there, a lot of the funding comes in, but also just accepting, and I think this is really important, that at the moment we're, we're not earning as much money as we really like to so just having a job on the side um but then in that job having that ethical frame of mind and thinking holistically about how we can introduce aspects of permaculture into that um and then but still trying to keep um, but do the permaculture teaching online as as part of that process so um it's looking at different ways to have the more like the donut economic thing just thinking about those kind of things what ways can we try to make sure we have that ethical lifestyle i suppose even beyond the the actual livelihood it, it's, it's just the actual lifestyle which i guess um has helped us to continue down that road to to fulfill the, the full kind of lifestyle with it um and it, yeah, it, 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 I think it's something that could be looked at in, in a lot um, more kind of deeper um, sort of process. But I think definitely using it in something, using it as something in what you do, rather than it's got to be completely and wholly and solely permaculture. Um, I think it can be really difficult. You know, there are people that done it. I put on my post there's a, there's a people in different um, America and set culture and stuff who are millionaires and stuff who have done it. Um, but that's a long process. So. Um, so yeah, that, that's it in a, that's in a nutshell. Yeah, thank you, Wendelin. Um, okay, so yeah, we're coming up to the end of the whole event. So yeah, maybe we can try and just be a bit brief and then we'll have a chance for everyone to, to share and to wrap it up. So let's have Teresa followed by Charlotte. Yeah, so... Um my my journey um yeah it, it, it's interesting so um i was like uh, doubly hit during covid uh, when that kicked off and um i had to close my company i was in the uk lived there for over 15 years and uh, moved back to sweden 
And for about 18 months, um, I lived on my savings. Uh, so um, just finally getting back on track with work. So actually getting an income or having a livelihood, uh, which to, although in, in one part I do enjoy the, the job, I still despise the whole thing. Uh, but um, yeah, mainly at the moment, I, I realized during that time having to live on your savings that you have to be really frugal. And I've actually kept it that way, even though I started to earn money and just saving up. So my my I have a vision of maybe doing a project in the future where I get my own property or land where building sort of partially community and um, having an aspect of coaching and teaching, particularly in and around permaculture and sustainability. But um, um, yeah, I'm very far off that mark. But at the moment, um, and in the meantime, I'm trying to learn as much as possible around permaculture and um, because I, I, I find it really interesting. Lovely, thank you, Teresa. So, Charlotte. Mm, thank you. And thanks for everybody for giving really kind of honest and open perspectives of where they're at at the minute. Um, I think I'm kind of at the beginning where I'm kind of slowly moving from, I've had this phrase of like always the, it's kind of like, you know, that always the bridesmaid, never the bride, always the student, never the teacher, and trying to kind of um, get out of that mindset that I constantly need to know more before I can step into sharing what I know and um, yeah so I, I was on a long walk today and just thinking like oh I like I've grown up with dogs so I can walk dogs or like I do actually know a certain amount about gardening so although I don't have letters and a course title I can put next to my name yet like I can offer I can offer what I know and and um, so, I don't know, kind of looking at what I've got already rather than um, constantly feeling like I need to reach further. Um, so, yeah, at the moment, I'm just um, also using skills from um, like a personal carer and their skills I've picked up from growing up in in the multi-generational household. And yeah, yeah, I think it's really me share. Thank you, Shalom. Um, so yeah, I'll share something briefly before we wrap up. Um, so yeah, I live in an off-grid community. I have the luck and the joy that I found um, a place where, well, yeah, I live in Bulgaria, so the cost of living is pretty low. Uh, my partner already had the land and had started building a house when I came to join and then we've continued to build it together it's like a natural house we're off grid so we had like some investment to like buy the solar panels and the batteries and things like that but then we don't and like to build our own water system but then we don't have like monthly costs to pay for those things so we can like save up money and then do a project and then it's like while it's still working we, we're using it um and then yeah in terms of like um incoming money um again yeah we like practicing voluntary simplicity and the same thing of like minimizing the kind of the needs of things that we need to buy and like maximizing on the home economy which is like a term i really enjoyed reading about um from david Holmgreen. he went into that quite a lot of like how can we diversify our home economy rather than like buying all these services as well as goods um, so yeah like for money coming in um, I'm teaching permaculture sometimes sometimes with Rakesh sometimes here with youth groups um, so sometimes they're paying for that sometimes we're doing funded projects so like European Union funded projects we're also getting donations for our um, ecology work here um and then i also have like an online business making clothes on etsy so like i design and make custom clothes for people and 
and I yeah I really enjoy that like you know I've kind of put it through the permaculture ethics and yeah there are some things that I think really align with my ethics some things that don't you know in the fact that it's like um I'm not really sure about where all the materials are coming from so I'm not sure how ethical that supply chain is also like the embodied energy and sending things around the world is like not perfect but yeah in terms of like the people care and like having a good connection and feeling like I'm making something from natural materials that people can wear and can enjoy for a long time I feel like that's something worth doing and it gives me like a joy and satisfaction and because a lot of the work we do here is quite physical like we have community gardens we grow a lot of our food we like maintain our own water system we do a lot of ecology work so we're planting trees um you know like taking care of a damaged landscape teaching people a lot of life skills um it's a nice balance sitting down and sewing and dreaming alongside the physical work so yeah for me it's a work in progress but yeah i really feel like permaculture has taught me a lot and it's kind of a really beautiful pair of glasses to kind of look through and yeah work with things okay so yeah, it's been really lovely hearing everyone's things they're sharing. You have your hand up, Charlotte. I just wanted to add maybe um, a reflection from, from having this, this final session. Um, just realizing how important and empowering it is to hear, because I think sometimes it's easy to, when you don't get these regular sharings and connections, particularly about like balancing, make, supporting yourself within a permaculture context, you can get completely psyched out by capitalist agenda and be like and and in those moments of feeling like inadequate within like a, a capitalist structure it's like what am i feeling that you're 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 failing because of me feeling like i'm failing because i'm not i'm not successful within that within within that framework and so then kind of hearing reflections from people at all different stages of, of working out how they're supporting themselves within permasculpture perma, perma and, um, and at different phases in their lives is just, um, is like quite uh, heart settling <laughs> um, that, it's, that it's possible and um, that it can be imperfect, but, and uh, yeah, and that it's valued and it's valuable. So yeah, thanks. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you for that reflection, Charlotte. Um, okay, so we're nearly at the end of yeah the meeting time. Um, do people want to close here, or would you like to have um, like a short last circle just to close the evening? I think maybe just two three words from each person, just as yeah. a final. But but we've got theoretically. In fact, we're over time already. So maybe just, yeah. just two, three words, check out. Yeah, I think that would be nice. Okay, let's start with um, Kate, followed by Ruth. Lifted my spirits. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, it feels like I've opened my mind back up again. Yeah. Um, then Teresa, followed by Charlotte. Inspirational, I would say so. A lots of new ideas. Thank you. Charlotte, followed by Steve. Um, my eyes feel very warm and watery, <laughs> and I'm quite tired. And I feel a lot more contented than when I when I started. Beautiful. Steve, and then Rakesh. Okay. Um, yeah, I enjoyed the last session. It's very interesting um, hearing how people make a living, how, how they sell their wage labor and how they balance that with their, with their lifestyles. And um, uh, I suppose the, the, the message that I'd like to ask, uh, you know, that I get across is that is to do something that gives you pleasure and, um, you know, find, think about something that gives you pleasure. That's something, something that makes you feel better in these, dark days and difficult times with COVID and 
and with the world in general. You know, find something that uh, raises your chi, that gives you energy, and uh, that makes you happy. Thank you, Steve. A lot of words in three words. <laughs> Verbal okay, diary. Rikesh. <laughs> Um, yeah, very inspired, uh, really great for people coming together and just being able to share and yeah, just thank you very much to, to everyone who's contributed in, in whichever way, really grateful. Beautiful. Yeah, I feel the tip of the iceberg, like, yeah, I think we opened something that's very meaningful for a lot of people and yeah, it would be nice to, to come back to it. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Did we miss Christina? Oh, we missed Christina. Okay. Because I talked too much last time. <laughs> <laughs> You're in debt with your word count. <laughs> yeah, it have been okay. <laughs> anyway, it's a pleasure always to be with you. It lifts up, it lifts up my, my spirit always. Um, I don't know. It's uh, We're in a way, we're soul puppies. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, I like being with you and it really helps me <laughs> to have a, a circle of permaculture friends. <laughs> and uh, as an as a PS to the to the livelihoods thing, I, I because I well I, I live in a countryside, I always think that the, the best way to store energy is in the land. <laughs> the best way to put money is on the ground. <laughs> yeah for sure great wonderful well thank you all very much um when is the next uh for those who are who are part of the roots and permaculture learning uh thing i think we have the next one is on the 12th is that right it should be the 12th of january, january. and the next roots and resilience will be the 22nd of january so yeah for those who are part of the Roots and Poem Culture Network, maybe we'll see you on the 12th. If not, we'll see you on the 22nd. And maybe given that the venue that I was going to do my reggae New Year's Eve event at has been cancelled because they had problems with the police. So we're thinking to maybe do an online little reggae New Year party. So if anyone wants to join, I'll share that on yeah, I'll share that. So if anyone wants a virtual reggae party for New Year, connecting with people all over that the world. That wasn't the one outside Downing Street, was it? No, <laughs> definitely not. Uh, That's not January saying, the 1st, I think. Yeah, Ding Dong, the Wicked Witch is Dead and all that kind of stuff. No, that's, um, that was not one of my, that's not something I organise. Wonderful. Lots of love, everyone. Take care. Love you all. See you hopefully soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thanks very much.